Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm so excited to do another lesson from the Bible. Of course, you can go to faithfilled.com slash curriculum to download activity sheets for this lesson, and also do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now today we're going to be talking about how God has plans for me. Well, not just me. He's got plans for you too. In fact, he has good plans for all of us. So let's jump right in. Come on. Oh, hey there. Are you wondering what I'm doing? I'm planting a seed. Well, actually, I'm planting a number of seeds. You see, these tiny little guys right here, they're going to grow up to be a big, beautiful flower called a black-eyed Susan. You know, black-eyed Susans are pretty cool. Bees love them for the nectar that they provide in that really big black part in the center. But people also love them because they're nice to look at. And also, they're pretty fragrant too. You know, I may know a little bit about this seed and what it's gonna look like, but there's someone else who knows so much more about it. God. God knows everything there is to know about this seed. And he knows all the potential. You know, even that tiny little seed has so much uniqueness to it and, and what it will become, God has all of that in his head. Kind of like the way he thinks about you and I. The Bible tells us that God knows everything there is to know about us, even the number of hairs on our head. And he also has plans for us. Here, let me show you something. This is a fully grown black-eyed Susan. Pretty neat, eh? And you know, just like a gardener has a plan when he plants each of his seeds, God has a plan when he created us. He knows our struggles and our problems, but he also knows our strengths and our victories, and he's willing to help us through them. So we're like God's plants? I guess that's what he's saying. It's a metaphor. Huh, so the right amount of food, water, and sunshine will help us grow healthy and mature? I guess. Great, because I've got an idea. Be right back. No, no, wait, 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 wait. The lesson's just getting started. Oh, guess he's gone. Huh. Back. Wait, what's that? The watering can. You better not be doing what I think you're going to I think you could use some mature. Ah! <laughs> so God created each of us with a plan. But unlike this plant here, we can choose whether or not we're going to follow God's plan or go our own way. The bad news is that we often choose to go our own way and ignore God's plan for our lives. But the good news is that he sent his son Jesus to be gracious to us, to forgive us, and show us that even our worst mistakes can be fixed and can be turned into great things. Here to tell us a little bit more about God's plan for us is my very good friend, Ashlyn. Let's welcome her to the show. Hi, Ashlyn. Thanks, Doug. Hey, kids. It's Ashlyn here, and I am so excited because today I'm going to show you my recipe to make my famous banana splits. Let's get started. So first, we're going to need some yellow bananas. You want to make sure they're perfectly yellow. Oh, no! My bananas! Doug! What's the matter? I asked you to get me yellow bananas. These are brown. Well, they were yellow when I got them. Well, I can't make banana splits with these. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Well, think of something quick. I'm on Brit, I mean, the kids are waiting. Okay, um, okay, think. What can I do with brown bananas? Um, oh, I got it. I can make banana bread. Okay, hold on, Doug. Just give me two seconds. Stall the kids for me, okay? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to think of something quick. Just put this over here. Let's see. Uh, 
What do you call a, a, a pair of banana peels? Slippers. <laughs> okay, not very funny. Uh, um, how much does it cost a pirate to pierce his ear? A buccaneer. <laughs> Get it? Okay. Ashlyn, uh, forget it. I'm just gonna eat my sandwich. What you, a sandwich? Dusty! I'm not, I'm not. Dusty, no! Get back here! Oh, run away! I regret nothing! <laughs> no sandwich, I'm gonna eat my lunch, and Dusty ate it. <sighs> okay, and we're back, and we're gonna be making banana bread. Told you it would just take a second. We're gonna start with our dry ingredients. I'm gonna add my flour. Salt and baking soda. We're going to set our dry ingredients to the side to work on our wet. So I put three bananas in here and I'm going to smash them up with a fork. Once those are all good and smashed, we're going to add one egg, our melted butter, and our sugar. And we'll give that a stir. Now it's time to combine our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. And we're going to combine the two. Once that's mixed, we're going to put it in our pan. So I greased this pan ahead of time. We're going to add our batter to it. Once we have the batter in our tray, we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven at 375 degrees for one hour. And make sure you have an adult supervision. I'll see you in a sec. It's done. Hey Doug, would you like me to cut you a piece? Yes. All right, let me get you one. Here you go. <laughs> well, there you go. We had to switch up our plan a bit, but in the end, it all worked out. Hey, Doug, how are you liking our banana bread? Yeah, it's delicious. Thank you, Ashlyn. <laughs> Boy, this is just what I needed. Oh, but we are supposed to be getting to the Bible story. <laughs> Excuse me for talking with my mouth off. Come on, let's go. Wow, nice save. From banana splits to banana loaf. Eh, I think I would have preferred the ice cream. No way. Banana bread is way better. Just think about it. It's healthier. <laughs> Did you see all the sugar that went in there? Well, what about this? You can have it any time of the day. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Wait, you don't have ice cream for breakfast? Who knows, Esther? Maybe you have become queen for such a time as this. Yes, I must go and talk to the king, even if he slays me. Oh, <laughs> hi there. Welcome to the story of Esther. Now, in a time when God's people, the Jews, were in exile in a place called Persia, there was a king named Xerxes. And King Xerxes was looking for a wife. He wanted the most beautiful woman in all the land. Oh, hi, yes, my daughter's very beautiful. You could queen? Oh, yes, my daughter's also beautiful. Yeah, she could be queen. Okay, good luck. Well, there were many people who served the king, of course, but one of them was named Mordecai. And Mordecai had a younger cousin 
who he was taking care of because she was an orphan. She had no father or mother. And that would be Esther. Now, Esther was very beautiful indeed, and Mordecai had suggested that she go to the palace to see if she would be chosen to be King Xerxes' wife and queen of Persia. Hey, yeah, I'd like to register, please. Okay, Bye, good luck. Mm, looking for a queen. Uh, for a queen. Uh, now, King, um, Esther. Uh, oh, let me go get her. Here she is. Well, as it happened, King Xerxes did, in fact, choose her and made her queen over all the land. That was, of course, a very powerful position. Well, sometime later, there was another man serving the king, and his name was Haman. <laughs> Now, Haman was not such a nice guy. You see, he didn't like Mordecai. In fact, he didn't like any kind of Jews because they had different laws than the people of Babylon. And also because Mordecai would never bow down to Haman. Oh, meet again, Mordecai. He's still not bowing down, huh? <laughs> so Haman plotted against Mordecai and all the Jews in Persia. He even tricked the king, King Xerxes, into signing a law that would see all the Jews destroyed. Okay, <laughs> there's a little law here. Can you have a signature? Oh, let's see. Oh, this looks good. Okay. Here you go. Uh, yeah, why, thank you. So Mordecai had sent messengers to Esther, and they explained everything that was going on. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Esther no, no. thought about it. She knew she had to do something, but she also knew that approaching the king would be dangerous. If she went into his chambers when he didn't ask for her, he could even have her killed. What was she going to do? Mordecai explained it to her this way. He said, you could keep silent and God will send deliverance through another. But think, perhaps God has sent you to be queen for such a time as this. Esther decided that she was going to trust God. She was going to believe that this was part of God's plan for her. And so she went to the king. Carefully, she approached the king, not knowing what he was going to do. Would he listen? Would he be sympathetic or kind? Thankfully, the king did listen. He asked Esther what she wanted. And Queen Esther simply invited the king and Haman to a dinner. dinner. In fact, she did this for two nights in a row, Enjoy. and she very much pleased King Xerxes. It also made Haman happy. You see, he thought that he was getting special treatment from the king and the queen. But on the second night, King Xerxes said this to Queen Esther. What is your petition? What is it that you want? Up to half my kingdom, it will be given to you. And Queen Esther replied, There is someone who seeks my life, but not just my life, the life of all my people to destroy them. King Xerxes was furious. Who would do this to my queen? Who would think to harm her? And that's when Queen Esther said, It's Haman. Well, the king was so mad. He couldn't believe it. And quickly, he had Haman taken away by the guards. The plans that Haman had made to destroy the Jews would instead destroy him. The king signed a new law, allowing all the Jews to protect themselves from their enemies. God had saved his people. Yay, we're saved. Yay, good job, Esther. I knew you could do it. I had faith all along. What a story. Suspense, courtly intrigue, betrayal, and even a female protagonist. A female what? Never mind. I'm just glad it had a good ending. I wonder what plan God might have for my life. Maybe I could be like Esther. If you're a queen, I want to be a daring knight. Hey, when we finish the lesson, you want to play in the castle? Good idea. Dibs on the crown. God had a plan for Esther's life. She could either follow that plan or she could go her own way. Her cousin Mordecai put it this way, if you do nothing, God will send deliverance through another. But think, 
Perhaps God has made you queen for such a time as this. We may never be kings or queens, but God has a plan for our lives as well. We can use everything that we've been given to follow the greatest plan, love God and love others, just the way that Jesus taught. That brings us to our Bible verse, and you know what that means. Come on, let's go get our Bibles. Okay, now our Bible verse for today comes from the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. So let's start at the beginning with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Phew! Now, Find chapter 29, that's the big number 29, and then verse 11, the little number 11. Let's read it together. I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy success. I do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for the years to come. Wow, God has plans for us? The Bible reassures us that we've been made for a purpose. God uses his children to do amazing things. And you know what? It doesn't just happen in the future, like when you grow up. God can use you right now, wherever you are. So what passions has he given you? What talents has he given you? What people has he put in your life? Like Esther, you can be brave and say yes to the plans that God has for you. And trust that God is going to use you to do great things. Now, Let's test what we've learned today with our game show. Come on. All right, everyone, welcome back to today's game show. That's right, the only game at the end of this lesson that asks, you know the question, what did we learn today? Let's jump right in. Today's contestant is none other than Rusty, our computerized companion. Welcome, my friend. Yes, freaking Doug. Thank you for having me on the show. Excellent. And are you feeling confident about being in today's show? I can confirm that all of my circuits are functioning at peak capacity. Okay. I, I estimate my chance of success at 98 nine six four three one zero four three seven eight one five six seven six four two one percent he's done okay we're back well rusty here's the question you have 30 seconds on the clock now in today's bible story Queen Esther had to do something very difficult. Was it A, face her fears, B, talk to the king, C, trust God's plan, or D, all of the above? Thank you for the question. I shall begin computing, computing, unpackaging data, repackaging data, cleaning up, Confirming with alternate repositories. Scanning for extraterrestrial life forms. Huh? I can confirm the answer is 
the all of the above. Did he say scanning for extraterrestrial life? Never mind. We have a winner! Yay! Winner! Way to go, Rusty! Yay! I am the winner. Yay! I have won. I love it when Rusty's on. I am a robot. <laughs> yeah, me too. He's so smart. Calculating, calculating. I am Rusty 9000, the most advanced computer ever made. I am C3PO, human cyborg relations. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> well, folks, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. So back to you, Doug. Well, thanks for joining me for today's lesson. You know, it's really encouraging to know that God wants us to be salt and light, that he wants to use us to make this world a better place. And I hope that this week you can find ways to say yes and live out God's plan for you. Well, why don't we close in prayer? Dear Lord, thank you so much for creating us with a purpose. Thank you that you use us to accomplish your will in the world. I pray that just like Esther, we would be able to be brave and say yes to the plans you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey kids, if you'd like to do some of our activity sheets, head on over to faithfield.com slash curriculum.